The mass killer who murdered eight for a My Little Pony character. Marion County 911. Is anybody experiencing flu like or COVID 19 symptoms? No, somebody shooting, somebody shooting in my hub. I'm at FedEx in Plainsville. What's the address? And there's gunshots everywhere. Okay, what are you hurrying? What is the address? The address is 8951 Miraville Road. Oh, How she's many shaky in her voice. You hear? I don't know. I don't know if anybody got shot. Can we go out down here? Can we run on the way to the end and go out? Don't go outside. Hey, stay where you're safe. 8951 Mirabel Road. I want you to stay with me, okay? Don't, don't hang up, okay? When a young boy's mother notices his odd behaviors, intensifying year by year, she begins to worry about him. It began as a child when young Brandon Hole insisted on wearing three pairs of shorts at a time. That seemed innocuous enough until you- Three pairs of shorts at the same time? Why? What would prompt somebody to want to do that? Like, what's the reasoning there? Later, when he developed an unusual obsession that soon went off the rails. Ooh. These are stains. This was the bedroom of that same boy. Only now, he was well into his teenage years, and his true love is depicted on the colorful posters hanging on these walls. The cartoon ponies you see are the central characters on a children's animated television series, My Little Pony. Most people- What do they call adults that like My Little Pony? Bronies. Yeah, b yeah, yeah, guys that like, like, grown men that like My Little Pony. But somebody said weirdos. No, like, I-, I <laughs> But, like, you can like whatever show you want to like. But, like, how is this going to evolve to him killing people for a My Little Pony character? People would do anything for the love of their life, but few knew just how far Brandon was willing to go for his. And the ones that did know would soon wonder how they didn't see the horrific outcome staring them right in the face. But it's not a real person. It's a voice character... Of an animation of a pony. Hello? Hi, can I speak with Brandon, please? Oh, uh, yeah, this is Brandon. Brandon Hole was no stranger to tragedy. In this phone call with police, you'll quickly learn how his demons began to develop at such an early age. His mother, Sheila, estimates he was only four years old as she describes the dramatic incident you're about to hear. I mean, he had, like, be real depressed one day and be like, you know, I ought to just do what my dad did. How did his dad kill himself? Damn. So. Okay. Wow. Did he find him or did he see that? Uh, no. He was there when we got into a real bad argument and his dad said that, you know, hey, whatever, if you leave with the kids, I'm going to myself. And I said, go ahead. Okay. He was, I think, four then. It seemed this haunting memory would follow Brandon everywhere he went for the rest of his life. Life. Before long, Sheila would see his struggles start to manifest in unusual behaviors, including his insistence on wearing three pairs of shorts at a time, the way he would rock back and forth as he watched television, and how if his routine tasks were interrupted, the whole sequence would begin again. He was eventually diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder. Yeah, I was going to say that seems exactly like that. Sensing something was off, Sheila took her troubled son to Barrington Health Center in Indianapolis, but there she would learn there was more going on than she ever knew. The first visit in 2011, when Brandon was nine, would prove to be his first of many. How many shorts do you wear? One. One pair of shorts. Why? I don't understand the point of wearing three. I, that has to just be doing, it has to be with something with just OCD. Like him just feeling the need to wear three. But with every visit, the outcomes grew worse and worse. And ultimately, it all culminated in some of the most terrorizing moments ever caught on camera. Less than a year after being diagnosed with a bevy of disorders, including disruptive behavior disorder, anxiety, obsessive compulsive disorder, and depression, Brandon's behaviors would soon become much more aggressive. Thanks to his ever-increasing temper, his mother took him back for another visit one year later. As it turned out, his mother's fears were no exaggeration and the medical records are damning evidence that prove it. From excessive lying to disrespectful behavior, Brandon's temper was now only part of a growing list of concerns. But for- you know, I still feel like, I mean, I, I feel like the trauma incident was really something that might've like triggered that, but there's people that have those disorders and don't go and murder people. For Brandon, it was just the beginning. 
It's May of 2000. And like t- her telling her husband to kill himself was kind of whack. But like he kept, he said, if you take the kids, I'm going to kill myself. And she said, do it. Like she should have just taken the kids. Cause that is, that is nuts. Like it's not her fault that she took, like it, it's not her fault. The guy killed himself. She took the kids. If the guy's saying, oh, you're going to take the kids away from me. I'm going to kill myself. Like that's the same thing as saying, if you break up with me, I'm going to kill myself. Like that's, that's just, you're putting an ultimatum on somebody that it's fucked up. Like it's not their fault. A police officer was dispatched to the home Sheila and Brandon shared with Sheila's boyfriend, Keith Larson. According to Keith... A divorce isn't needed in order for one-sided parent custody. Yeah, but that's usually when it occurs. He and Brandon were engaged in a water fight, and when Keith sprayed him with the garden hose, Brandon flew into an unexpected rage. He'd locked himself in the bathroom where he proceeded to destroy items inside. Sheila alleged that she picked the lock, after which Brandon left the bathroom and Sheila became his target. Now that's fucking That's back. when Brandon snapped. He punched and slapped Sheila in the face multiple times, kicked her in the legs and bit her on the forearm. She followed as he ran for the kitchen and grabbed two table knives out of a drawer, then in a mad scramble, charged at his own mother. He trapped her in the family room and wouldn't allow her to leave. It seemed like some- If I ever had a son, that tra- that charged my wife with a knife, I would beat the shit out of him, disown him, and put him up for adoption the next day. The next day. Gone. I mean, I'm going to say right now, that's in part, the, like, the parents' fault for raising him that way. But, like, if you try, if I had a kid that tried to kill my own wife, they're gone. They're gone. That kid is no longer, that's not my kid anymore. Something unthinkable was about to happen. But just when she thought there was no escape... He could kill you as well? Bro, a fucking, uh, a fucking 12-year-old with a knife? Like, yeah, he could. But I'm saying, like, if, he, if he's distracted, you just kick the shit out of him. Like, he's not going to be able to fucking... He needs to be in a mental institution? Yeah. Well, I'm saying it's also the parents' fault that they raised him that way. But I'm saying if it ever just was an out-of-the-blue snap, and I'm like, and the kid's... An, I was a good father, and the kid was a normal fucking kid, and then out of nowhere he tries to kill my wife? Yeah, then no, that kid's gone. Forever. Police arrived in the nick of time, and the madness for now came to an end. Somehow, Sheila only sustained a small wound to her right forearm, but her fears about her son's behavior leading up to this point had been all but confirmed. The incident ended in Brandon receiving several months of probation. After that incident with his mother, everything could- so why are the parents letting him have a hanging doll in his fucking room? Like, what the fuck is this? Continued in the same direction, and every year, Brandon would ascend another step on that stairway to madness. He quit school in 2014 and never got beyond the sixth grade level. He stayed home, his depression ever present. Never and got b- beyond the sixth grade level? Isn't it required that you have to finish middle school? I know you don't have to finish high school. Do you have to finish middle school? It just says they're free. It doesn't say what's required. In most states, children must start school by the age of six and remain enrolled in school until they're at least 16. But some kids drop out earlier. But I think most people at least finish middle school. Stairway to madness. He quit school in 2014 and never got beyond the sixth grade level. He stayed home, his depression ever present, and isolated from the world, worsening his condition. To manifest in his chilling search history, You've already learned about his obsession with My Little Pony. But while left alone, Brandon had been researching something far more sinister. Brandon reported that he was interested in the backstory of why the perpetrators engage in such acts. I feel bad for the victims. The family sometimes spent hours just reading articles. What articles? In 2015, Brandon was assessed by the Riley Children's Foundation. His search history included an obsessive interest in mass shootings. He told the assessor that, quote, I feel bad for the victims, the families. When asked if he could put himself in the shoes of the perpetrators, he denied it, saying, I don't want to waste my time doing something like that. It's a hassle. And that he wouldn't want to cause... Not that it's a bad thing to kill people. Uh, I think it's a waste of time to do a mass shooting. Not like, oh, wow, that's fucked up. Families any trauma. Chillingly, the assessor concluded that Brandon seemed to empathize with the victims, despite the fact that he also admitted to sharing memes and jokes about them with his friends. Then, the day came when 18-year-old Brandon made the decision to follow- That's 18-year-old Brandon? 
follow through with something he planned Dude, to do. He looks like 13. Do for quite some time. It was March 2nd, 2020. He was like, well, drive me to the gun store and I'll just look around. On the way to the gun store, we saw a sticker that said hashtag stop. I, uh -huh. And he's like, there's your sign. And I was like, hmm, okay, well, if you buy a gun, there's your sign. You know, I got to take that away from you. You know what I mean? Why is the mom letting her son buy a gun? Like, I don't want to say L mom again, but L mom again. Your son is fucking going through a lot of shit. Why are you letting your son buy a gun? I mean, right. So, and he did buy it without bullets. The store was out of ammunition that day. That night, Sheila and her daughter devised a plan. The situation was far too perilous, and they couldn't just sit back and watch to see what became of it. They had to act. If not, Sheila feared, perhaps Brandon would follow through and take his own life, just as his father had done several years prior. Or something much, much worse. The following morning, they traveled to the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department and filed a case report telling of his troubled past. Okay, and how now they're doing something. He planned to point his shotgun at police, thereby ensuring his death. Later that same day, on March 3rd, several officers and members of the Indianapolis Mobile Crisis Assistance Team, or MCAT, responded to Sheila's home. Upon entering, Brandon was placed in handcuffs, with the police report stating that Brandon had become quite anxious, and his main focus was ensuring that no one looked at his computer. What police would find on that computer... Damn. Yeah, that's even worse than my keyboard, bro. ...would leave Sheila utterly shocked, with the search revealing extremist websites in his history. At this time, Brandon's gun was confiscated under Indiana's red flag law. When Brandon was taken to Eskenazi Hospital for further assessment, she hoped he'd be put on a 72-hour hold. But instead, somehow, he was in and out in under two hours. To Sheila's utter surprise, an emergency medicine doctor determined there was no diagnosis, and Brandon denied having any issues. What's more shocking, there's no record that indicates a formal psychological assessment was ever conducted on Brandon. Yeah, but then, okay, so, he, like, they bring him in, they say, oh, he has a gun, all this other shit, they don't want him to look at the computer, and then they just let him go, and probably a day later, he's gonna go murder people. Despite Sheila's cries for help, a few days after the visit to Eskenazi Hospital, a detective contacted Sheila concerning his confiscated shotgun. I just needed to talk to you about uh, what happened with Brandon. My role in this is simply just to see if we're going to file a retention case. If they file a retention case, he would also be uh, deemed to be a dangerous person, which only means that he wouldn't be able to purchase a firearm. This isn't a criminal record, and it's not, you can't even see it. Like, if somebody were to search for, for criminal cases and stuff, these cases yeah. don't go into there because they're just civil. Once they get filed, like if I needed to check on one, um, I can't even do it. I have to send an email to the prosecutor's office and ask them to look. Do that! Why wouldn't they do that? File them as a dangerous person. Now he can't buy a gun. They're the only ones that can access it. So to see like what the status of it is. Then when the FBI visited with Sheila the following month, they would unknowingly add fuel to the fire. An agent along with another officer visited Sheila's home and asked to meet with Brandon. When the agent asked Brandon what he planned to do with his life, Brandon replied that perhaps he could join the FBI. In response, the agent made it clear that wouldn't be an option for him. Perhaps this was the straw that broke the camel's back. It would be exactly one year to this very day that Brandon would unleash the inner demons he'd been harboring since early childhood. At the conclusion of the meeting, all intelligence that had been gathered on Brandon revealed the last thing Sheila or any mother would ever want to hear about their own son. Brandon had all the makings of a mass shooter. Some of the red flags that the FBI may have recognized in Brandon were that he was a loner with feelings of rejection from society, as well as feeling like he was being treated unfairly. And his but there's so many people that feel that way. That doesn't mean you go and kill people. ...belief that he was a victim. Other red flags that Brandon showed were his symptoms of depression, homicidal thoughts, violent fantasies, and anger problems. In conjunction with the other warning signs were his traits of narcissism, and most concerning of all, his fixation on past school shootings and mass murderers. Despite the exchange with the FBI agent, Brandon, for a time, seemed to be on the up and up. 
He found a job in 2020, and he seemed to enjoy working at the local FedEx Smart Post facility. Maybe this was the new beginning Sheila had hoped for after all those arduous years. Maybe Brandon was finally improving. But it wasn't the case, and in fact, he was only just ascending into peak madness. In the months before he would do the unthinkable, Brandon quit showing up for work. It seemed he couldn't bring himself to get out of bed. By October, his stint at the FedEx facility had officially come to an end. It was mid-March of 2021, and Brandon had moved back to his mother's Black New Balances? There's home. Once again, Sheila had to fight the system in order to get her son in front of a mental health professional before he was finally assessed. Did they not fucking take his gun away? They just didn't file the fucking dangerous person thing? Multiple pages of notes named a variety of Brandon's conditions. Amongst them, generalized anxiety disorder, recurrent major depressive disorder. Meanwhile, even while he was in therapy, this is an actual list of the items he was purchasing. As he was making these purchases, he attended another session with a social worker. But by now, Brandon had reached the point of no return. What is he buying, Magpul? What the fuck is that? Is this just attachments for guns? Her. But by now, Brandon had reached the point of no return. The following day, he attended a session with a different social worker, stating he had no empathy and no care for the lives of others, wow. including his own flesh and blood. Two weeks later, in what would be his final counseling session, he stated the same thing again. But what he added this time was chilling. Brandon and then they do nothing! claimed he was a danger to society, and that society should fear him. And he was right. Marion County 911, it's, there's been a shooting. Okay. Multiple shots. How many shots are fired? A lot. It started the night Brandon quietly departed home, never to return again, en route to his final destination, the FedEx Smart Post facility, sometime around 11 p.m. on April 15th, 2021. Oh, wow, this is a while ago. That particular ago. evening was nothing out of the ordinary. Sheila returned home from work with dinner for Brandon and found him to be in a pleasant mood. After he ate, he took a relaxing bath. Then they both went to bed. Or so Sheila thought. Once inside the FedEx Smart Post facility, Brandon makes his way through, savagely opening fire on everyone in his path. Then he moves through the lobby, assassinating employees at random as they attempt to run for their lives. Soon after, he returns to the parking lot and immediately opens fire on those unfortunate enough to be in close proximity. 911 calls flood local dispatchers as Brandon continues his murderous undertaking. Uh, I think there's possibly multiple shooters. I hear them outside. I'm in the control room. There's three of us in here. Okay, so what I need for you guys to do, like I said, stay down, make sure your door is locked. Put something against that door if you can. This is so sad, dude. Yourself safe, okay? Please. Is anyone here? Okay, they're on the way. They're on the way. In a matter of minutes, the premises transformed into a nightmare. There's somebody out in the parking lot with a rifle shoot and we got the guy in here. We got him in here that he's been shot. Okay. He's gonna be in our shack with us. Hey, hey, stay on the line for me. Let me get medics on the phone. I'm not gonna hang up, okay? Stay with me. There is at least one person down. Uh, it's in an ambulance or two, please. Yeah, we have the ambulance and the officers in route. But they have an AR-15. I'm not sure how yeah, many- Yeah, they should gun that motherfucker down, bitch. You see that one? You remember that fucking, like, two... Oh, my God. What was it? Not, like, two weeks ago. Like, two months ago. Whenever that one woman uh, fucking... Or whoever it was. I, I don't even remember who it was. They shot up an elementary school. And there's a clip of officers unloading on on them. And they're dead on the ground. And they shoot, they shoot them, like, six more times. Good shit. Good shit. Should have shot him in the kneecaps first, but you know, good shit. I don't know what guns they have, but I know they at least have one assault rifle. They're still shooting. Okay, I, okay, stay on the line. Still, they're already on the way to you, okay? <laughs> but stay on the line with me. Keep your, keep yourself safe. I need you to let me know anything that happens, okay? <laughs> right now I just hear a lot of gunshots and a lot of people. Okay, around. okay, hold on. Stay on the line. The emergency calls continue to pour nope. in as the casualties are mounting. Dispatchers frantically assist callers as the horror continues to unfold. We have shots fired, shots fired. We need police. Ah, uh, they're still shooting as we speak. He's already shot about five people. The shooters in the building. You said there were five people shot there. 
or he yes. got... The first officers are arriving at the scene. Dispatchers and responding officers communicate in real time. However, in the midst of the chaos, details are not yet clear. Have we confirmed whether we have one or two shooters? Reports are saying two shooters. Okay, is, is it one person, two person? There's only one, right? It's that one kid. It sounds like the same report, so I'm assuming one. Okay, are they inside or outside? Why are they outside? Okay. I'm getting information that he's still inside the building from somebody pulling off the lot. Footage reveals that after carrying out his plan, Brandon returned to an earlier location in the FedEx facility. Without so much as a shred of hesitation, he then proceeded to end one more life. His own? His own. Employees on site continue to place calls, begging and pleading for help in this surreal nightmare that has been sprung upon them without... So he just went in, killed eight people, and then killed himself. ...location in the FedEx facility. Without so much as a shred of hesitation, he then proceeded to end one more life, his own. Employees on site continue to place calls, begging and pleading for help in this surreal nightmare that has been sprung upon them without warning. Wow. As far as they are aware, the shooter is still preying on victims. Is there some place you can get safe? I want you to stay safe, okay? I don't know because I still hear guns. Okay. The is, is there some place you can hide? Is there a, a desk, something you can get under? <laughs> I'm at door 235. There is a trailer on the That shit is pussy moves, not gonna lie. You kill others and then kill yourself without facing the consequences. Yeah. Because if they get arrested, they usually want to die to begin with, right? Like, he wanted to die. Um, so they kill people and then kill themselves because if they get caught, they're not going to be able to kill themselves in prison, right? So then they're just going to serve life in prison. Or they're going to get the death sentence and wait 30 years to get the death sentence. Get under. Slide under there. Some place where you can Slide stay under, safe, okay? And, and if they're in prison, if you're like a mass shooter and you get sent to like a specific prison, the other prisoners will probably torture you. And that's even worse. Okay. <laughs> really well, okay, stay with me, okay? As Natasha and another employee remain hidden, well over a hundred officers are dispatched to the scene. Two more down, car and parking lot, white Toyota Camry. Even criminals have standards, yeah. Like if you like rob a store, like they're not gonna give a fuck. Or, like, even if you commit murder and you, like, kill another, like, gang member or you kill somebody that was trying to kill you or some shit, like, that's not, like, they might not even fucking judge you for that. But, like, if you walk into, like, a mall and you kill eight people and four of them are children and one of them's, like, a woman or some shit, like, they're gonna fucking, they're gonna torture you. Another one down by the store explorer, front row. Control, advise Eskenazi will have multiple patients. Advise them to be ready. I'm out by the lobby. I had to get all the people out and get through the turnstiles, but he was sticking the gun through. So when he went out to the parking lot, I rushed everybody our third turn, our second set of turnstiles and sent them in the truck. Is there a certain entrance number or door that we can note here in the run so they know where to get to you? And how many people are with you? Through. I can get the cops through. Uh-oh, somebody's at the door out there. Is that a police officer or is it him again? It's a police officer. It's a police officer. Again. Judy encounters the officers as they make their way through the building to secure the scene. Dispatchers check in with callers who have remained on the lines. The, op yeah. the officers know where you are, okay? I've put that in there, okay? okay. Do you want to stay on the line with me until yes. they get please there? Don't leave me. Okay. Yes. I'm not going to leave please you. Please. I will not leave you then, okay? Yo, imagine being the, the fucking operator, too. How stressful. I mean, it's obviously stressful for the fucking person in the situation. But, like, as the operator, you're trying to get shit done as fast as possible so you can fucking keep them alive. I'm going to stay with you, you then. Okay, you're fine. Okay, that's... that's with the Wolf logo? I don't even fucking know, dude. Perfectly fine. I think After more than 30 this. minutes with the dispatcher, Natasha's wait is over. Help! 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 I'm under... I'm under... I love it. Allegedly, because of the facility's policy that employees couldn't carry cell phones in certain areas, some workers may not have been able to phone for help or contact friends and family. Yup, and I'm suing FedEx! And I'm suing FedEx! ...during the shooting. The killing spree had come to an end, but the aftermath of the attack is difficult to fathom. 
Eight innocent, unwitting victims' lives ended abruptly. Soon, Brandon is located by officers as they confirm that he is now deceased. It was then that Brandon's disturbing motive was revealed. Brandon was heartbroken over a My Little Pony character. In his final Facebook post on April 15, 2021, he wrote, I hope that I can be with Applejack in the afterlife. My life has no meaning without her. If there's no afterlife and she isn't real, then my life never mattered anyway. But I kind of just need to talk to you. Wow. If she isn't real, then my life never mattered anyway. But I kind of just need to talk to you about what happened that day and how you're feeling about uh, whether you'd want it back or if you... Oh, you know, sorry, to, sorry okay. to interrupt, but, okay. but I, don't, I don't want it back at all. It's fine. What would be your goal for us to do with the, with the gun? Uh, just, just destroy it or... Okay. Well, yeah, I'd say that because okay. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about uh, getting my life back on track. I, I don't have any mental health issues that I'm aware of. I, I don't think I do. Uh, and I wouldn't say depressed, um, but my feelings to the, the reason why I got a gun is because I wanted to show my best friend who's really into hunting and stuff, uh, mainly also for like the fun of shooting it. I mean, if you're getting it back on track, I don't know what it's off track of it unless it's just that you well, didn't get your well high school diploma. I mean, yeah, well, I mean, off track. I mean, yeah, it's well, yeah, it's bad. I mean, I'd say. That, I mean, do you think this like not doing anything with your life is on track? I mean, I don't think. Well, no, so. I. But I also think that could make me sad and depressed if I felt like a failure or whatever. But apparently, that's not what you're feeling. So. Like I just signed up for GED. I'm going to get my GED. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm going to counseling or therapy or. Do I, you think he's lying here, or do you think he was ping ponging between? Like actually wanting to get his life on track, and then and then wanting to die and kill people. Not really sure what the correct term is. Yeah. And uh, I'm gonna try to get my life back on track, and I'm really trying hard. I don't know. The FBI concluded Brandon's purpose was to demonstrate his masculinity and capability while fulfilling a final desire to experience killing people. It was a moment in time that further reinforced the importance of not only recognizing red flags, but acting upon them too. Those eight lives that were lost that day ranged in age from 19 years to 74 years wow. and include Matthew Alexander, Samaria Blackwell, Emerjeet Johal, Joswinder Kaur, Joswinder Singh, Emerjeet Sekhan, Carly Smith, and John Weissert. Brandon's mother wants her son to know that when she cries these days, it's not for him, it's for the victims. If she could talk to him today, she'd say, I grieve those people more than I ever will you. That was fucking nuts. Dude, rip in the chat for those people. I've never even heard of that story. I've never even heard of that story. That was fucking nuts, dude. He said he wanted to be in it with Applejack in the afterlife. I mean, if I, I think if there's an afterlife, I don't think cartoon characters would be there. But, I mean, I don't know. I don't really even know what I believe right now, so I can't definitively say that Applejack wouldn't be in the afterlife. But, yeah, no, that fucking sucks, dude, for the people that died. Jeez.